Hello and welcome to Spindle TV. My name is Laney Shaughnessy and I'll be your host this evening. How's everybody doing tonight? Hope you're all doing well. Hope you're all doing great. I'm doing well. Looking forward to tonight. I need to build myself a chest of drawers. Got more clothes than I do storage space. And so I thought I would be, this would be the first project for the new build series where we'll design um, a project and then uh, there'll actually be a full build video with it. So, uh, no place to start like the present. And uh, so this chest of drawers series, this is part one. We're going to work on the design uh, and then in subsequent parts and stuff. Uh, we're going to be going through and uh, out in the shop and start to finish building it. Uh, we're going to use a variety of tools, uh, power tools and hand tools and the CNC uh, to make this project. And uh, tonight in our design, we're going to be using SketchUp and V-Carve uh, for the design part of it. Uh, SketchUp for the main part of the design and then our V-Carve for the parts that are going to be uh, used on the CNC that we'll be making on the CNC. Not all parts are going to be made on the CNC, uh, but uh, a good variety of them will be. And so we're going to kind of go from there. And hopefully uh, you uh, get something out of the class. <laughs> that's, that's the whole point of it all. Uh, let's see here. Bear with me just one second. Let me get things a rocking and a rolling here. And what do I, what am I trying to do here? I'm trying to pull together all the photos. Box to box yourselves. We'll get this run. <laughs> we'll get this rolling in just a second here. Lord have mercy. Um, all right. We're gonna start off. Let's close. Well, Lord, Laney, talk about being prepared. Why am I not seeing what I'm looking for? Why am I not seeing what I'm looking for? Okay, let's close out of that. All right, let's switch over to our, uh, I believe I am on channel two. Uh, yep. And uh, let's get me on the screen. Um, Let's see here, channel two. Let's get me down in the bottom left hand corner. Uh, switch on down here. How y'all like that model there? That's available at builditv.com uh, along with other patriotic uh, flag and eagle models. Uh, let's close out of that. Uh, and we're not gonna save that. All right, let's start off with, we're going to start off in SketchUp tonight, ladies and gentlemen. For those of you that aren't familiar with SketchUp, uh, SketchUp is a 3D design program where uh, you can uh, design all kinds of things. Uh, I use it for my furniture builds and stuff, and it is a great, uh, easy to use program, uh, very user friendly. Uh, jayscustomcreations.com J-A-Y-S jayscustomcreations.com is a great place to uh, get tutorials and everything on SketchUp but you're going to get a little bit of a lesson tonight alright let's change our styles to engineering style and that will work wonderful alright so, 
This chest of drawers, let's see if I can pull up uh, these massive amounts. This is an example of kind of what I'm going for. And the reason why I'm going with narrow, I have very little room uh, in here and uh, in, in uh, the space where it's going to go. So I'm actually going to be building two of these. Uh, they are low profile. This stands about 40 inches tall. It is about 21 inches wide. I think I'm going to go a little bit wider than that and about 15 inches deep. Uh, it's a five drawer chest of drawers and I'm going to be building two of them. And in between both of them, there's going to be two of them, like two, you know, uh, towers and all. And in between them, I'm going to put a, uh, a desktop and I'm going to have basically kind of uh, an area where uh, I need some other kind of flat area table space uh, for uh, just working and stuff. So I thought since I had to build some chest of drawers, I might as well go instead of wide and everything or low profile, I'm going to go uh, right in the middle. Uh, this is my inspiration. This is not my design by any means. Uh, I think Ashley Furniture has something similar to this. This is their uh, one of their chest of drawers and all, but I like it. Uh, I'm going to make some changes to it in our design tonight. But this is kind of the concept that we're going for. And I'm going to be making two of them. Uh, and then I'm going to be putting a desk, uh, kind of a desk in between. So uh, like a little bit of a office slash room storage space, what have you. All right. So that's kind of what we're going for. And uh, from there... Uh, let's get started. Uh, as I said, uh, this is going to be about 21 inches wide. I think I'm going to go a little wider than that. 15 inches deep, 41 inches tall. That's with the top and everything on it. Uh, and we'll see what, we, what we're going to get uh, around there. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get back into SketchUp. Now SketchUp has a variety of shape and line tools. Uh, push pull where you can extrude parts and all and uh, that's exactly where we're going to start here we're going to start with a rectangle and my axis planes uh, here uh, that you can see I'll go ahead and go into my uh, camera view and let's go with just a straight front on view uh, this blue line here is my axis the red line as that's my Z the red line is my X and then the green line is my Y but let's get that straightened back up. Front view. And let's pull this over just a bit here. All right, so let's start off with a rectangle. And um, I believe uh, that my top is gonna be about um, uh, three quarters of an inch thick on there. Uh, I am gonna have kind of a little bit of a leg assembly. So uh, I think the legs are going to stand about three inches tall. So we're going to remove uh, from that 41 inches, we're going to remove the uh, four inches. We'll go four inches off that. And so on this rectangle, I want uh, to be um, 15 inches. I'm going to type in 15 comma. And then on my height, I'm going to go um uh 41 39 37 37 inches and hit enter that'll give me this piece here and let's rotate this a bit so you can see and zoom into it now i'm going to extrude this up and let's turn it a little bit more so you can see the extrusion uh, i've got my push pull tool here uh, the side panels are going to be three quarters, so I'm going to type in 0.75 and hit enter. Uh, let's do that again. Try that one more time. 0.75, enter. There we go. Now, this uh, is going to be considered a component space bar to get out of your tool. And so I'm going to triple click on it, and that's going to select the whole thing. And then I'm going to hit G for group. Uh, and uh, we'll create a group there and we'll just leave it component one. So that is uh, one of our side pieces. We're gonna need two of those. So uh, I'm going to use the move tool. The move tool. 
I'm going to grab it over here and I'm going to hold down the control key and move it over to the side. And that'll give me my copy. Cool beans. All right. So, uh, and of course, while you're still clicked on it, uh, make sure you click off of it or it's just going to keep moving stuff around. All right. Let's get straightened back up here. Uh, let's go with the front view. Now, I need these parts facing sideways and everything. Uh, and so I'm going to go Q for rotate. And I want to rotate on the uh, Z axis, basically. So my blue axis. So I'm going to click here and here. And I'm going to pull that back 90 degrees. Wonderful. And then the same thing here. Q for the uh, rotate tool, get on my blue axis, click there and push that back 90 degrees. Da, 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 da. That doesn't look 90 degrees. Let me get back in my straight on view. Uh, Stand by. I'm going to undo that for a second. Let me get, make sure that I'm on my red axis here. I'm on my red axis. That just did not look like 90 degrees to me for some reason. Okay. Now, this um, drawer, this just chest of drawers, is, they, they got it at 21 inches wide. And I think I'm going to uh, extend that out to 24 inches overall. Uh, so I've got three quarter inch sides. We're going to do some nice panels on the sides uh, that'll get cut on the CNC. And then my drawer fronts are going to have some panels. So we're going to create some profiles in Vetric. Uh, uh, we're going to use the profile toolpath to create some nice uh, curved kind or. Um, raised panel kind of look uh with our cuts and stuff on our drawer fronts but i think i'm gonna go 24 inches so overall uh this is um three quarter and three quarter inch and a half so let's grab the rectangle tool again and let's start off with our uh, base here And I want this to be um, three inches tall by 21, right? No, what am I doing? Uh, 24 minus an inch and a half is 22 and a half. So 22.5 comma three, enter. There we go. All right, P for push pull. And let's pull that up three quarters, 0.75, enter wonderful all right let's take this guy here and i'm going to use m for move there's a lot of keyboard shortcuts that you would want to learn in sketchup uh, and the m tool is definitely uh you know m for move p for push pull all that wonderful jazz all right let's get kind of looking at a side view here let's change and let's pull this down so everybody can see. Okay. Now, on my base, uh, I'm going to be making kind of a nice three inch leg base. Uh, there's going to be a kind of a lip on the inside, and my chest of drawers is going to fit on that. Uh, so, right now, how I have it sitting is I have this base right at the bottom. Uh, that's not going to be the case. Uh, there's going to be um, somewhere right. Oh, uh, somewhere right in here is where the legs are actually going to be. So let's go ahead and hold down our shift key and select both of these. Use the M for move. It's, it's a lot of keyboard shortcuts, or you can use the tools up here, either one. But it's just a lot easier with the shortcuts. And I'm going to move this up to the midpoint here. Wonderful. And uh, we're going to... Uh, I'm going to use miter joints on this cut here uh, for the trim going around basically that base. Uh, just going to cut miters and all. 
So we're going to, uh, we'll put those miters in in just a moment, but let's go ahead and get the other three inch uh, base going here. And let me learn how to draw. So this is going to be um, if I went 15 inches deep plus that three quarter, uh, that is uh, 15 and three quarters, right? So uh, 15.75 comma three enter. Wonderful. P for push pull. Let's pull that out, 0.75, enter. Um, and I want to measure that because that does not look 0.75. One from there to there, it is three quarters. Man, my eyes are throwing me off today for some reason. All right. Now, um, I want to uh, pull this out into a, a miter. Uh, cut and everything so I'm going to I'll start basically I'm going to use the protractor uh, for this and um, the protractor does not have a keyboard shortcut so that's the only one that I've got to uh, open up the tools and click on the protractor here and I want to come out 45 degrees so 45 there's my line, that's kind of my guideline, just like guidelines in the Vetric software. And uh, I'm gonna grab this, uh, these two uh, points here, and let me turn this so you can kind of see what's happening here. I'm gonna grab these two parts here and I'm gonna pull them out to that 45 degrees. You know what, that's actually not the best way to do that. Laney, you know better than that. I'm going to, that was stupid, don't do that. That was dumb, I don't know what I was thinking. Um, I'm going to push pull tool. I'm gonna to pull this out to here. Uh, let's get rid of that line that was created. That was dumb. Okay, one more time, push pull snap it to here and now here I'm going to draw a line from here to here and when I use the push pull tool it's going to cut that segment off so I can just get rid of it cut it slice it All right and the same thing here I'm going to push this out to here and on the uh, line that's here uh, I can swipe that uh, no I can't I'm just kidding you. Um, oops let's make this a do -do -do -do. let me pull that back here oh. okay now I'm gonna use the move tool and whoa hold on don't do that now hoss Come on now. It really does not like that line there. So let me get rid of that line real quick. Delete that. Oh, you son of a gun. All right, this is the tricky part of SketchUp. Um, when you have lines and things that uh, connect, you need to, um, you know, be careful because once they're if they're not joined as groups or individual components uh they they blend together you know uh and uh stuff starts getting wacky i am not 100 percent proficient but that's going to be our uh front side here wonderful how beautiful is that okay now i'm gonna take um this component here. I'm going to take this component and I'm going to right click and hide it for a second. And um, no, I'm not. I'm not going to hide it. I'm just going to redraw this over there. I did that a little bit backwards. I should have made those components and then uh, I could copy and paste to the other side and all that stuff. But 
old Laney wasn't thinking. So let's um, come back here. All right, so again, 15.75 comma, three inches, enter, push pull, pull that out, 0.75, enter. A lot of keyboard shortcuts, so you can you can pull it out and you can see the dimensions that you're pulling it down at the bottom right of the screen. My little uh, subscribe button is kind of hiding that uh, there and that won't go away because that's a watermark. But um, down at the bottom right hand corner of the screen, you can see what you're pushing and pulling and things to, uh, but it's easier to just type in the dimension and you separate the length and the width by a comma. And then so length, comma, width, enter or Vice versa. Now, same thing on this. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and push pull this out to here. And since I already know uh, 45 degrees is from this point to that point, I'm just going to go ahead and do that and push pull this part and get rid of it all the way down. Oh, you son of a gun. Sometimes it goes past the close. Let's try that one more time. There we go. So that miters that piece there. Wonderful. And then I'm just going to move and snap this to here and that to there. Okay. All right. Sweet. Now, let's get on to the back side here. What I'm going to do with the back side is there's going to be basically just a strip uh, in here that's going to be glued uh, and uh, that'll be what these sides will sit on and uh, everything um, the as far as the back panel there's gonna be a back panel and everything but uh, there's not gonna be a back base I don't want it I want it to be able to where it can go I'll think about that I'm, I want it where it can go flush against the wall um, but uh, we'll decide on that later all right, so let's go ahead and draw in our little strips. And well, before we do that, before we draw in our strips, I wanna click on this, this whole component right here. When I triple click, it selects it all because they're, they're touching, all those vector lines are touching each other. So it's kind of one item. And I'm gonna group that uh, together, G for group. That way, if I move this um, assembly, it moves that whole assembly and everything right cool beans all right um, let's come in here with our rectangle tool and my strip is going to be 15 inches long um, but uh, I think it's only going to be about three quarter inches so I'm going to go 0 0.75 comma 15 enter uh, I'll use the push pull tool to pull that out Woo, not that far just there and I will component I will group that one together as a component because I just want to be able to hold select this and go to move and hit the control key grab it on this corner control key and just move a copy over to here And of course, uh, stop. Make sure that you space bar or get off of that part before you go moving around because it's just gonna wanna keep moving it because it kind of locks your mouse into it and stuff. All right, so that's gonna be that. Well, we have two sides and a frame. How are you guys doing so far? Y'all doing all right? Good. Um, as long as y'all are doing well, that's all that matters. Now, um, the sides, they're uh, going to be carved on my CNC. My CNC can ac uh, accommodate uh, the sides um, for a couple of things, a couple of reasons. Uh, it's going to be a two-sided job. And uh, I am going to probably utilize, I don't know if I'm going to go old school with this and have just wooden slides for the drawers or if I'm going to go kind of new school and use uh, mechanical slides metal mechanical slides it really depends because what I do want is I know that I want is a full pull 
okay? And um, if I use wooden slides, then um, there's gonna be a point where if I pull, the drawer is just gonna pull out unless I have a little stop in there or something for it. But I would like to be able to do full pull where it goes past the front um, and uh, be able to just get access to this drawer. I hate drawers that only open partially and you have to freaking dig back there and stuff. Even though this is only 15 inches, it's not that wide. It's one of my biggest pet peeves uh, with furniture. I want a full pull. I want access to my whole drawer. So I'll most likely be using mechanical slides. And so on those sides, I'm probably gonna make uh, little pilot holes. I'll probably use a V-bit uh, and just identify that with a drilling tool path uh, the pilot holes where those drawer slides are going to go um, but on the outside I want some decoration to this so I want an, some nice looking side panels um, most definitely on the back side here and what I'm going to do uh, trying to give you guys a little bit of a heads up is it's not going to be a full raise panel it's going to be two it's going to look like uh, you know two raised panels stacked on top of each other because remember on one side or the other there is going to be a desk so imagine if you will if i select all of this and hold down the control key or hit the move key first then control and i pull this over now um let's pull that over i want to go Right about there is fine. And uh, let's take the rectangle tool. I don't know how high, uh, I'm gonna have to sit in my chair and measure like my desk currently right now that I'm sitting at uh, doing this. And all from the floor up, uh, it is 29 inches to the bottom of the desk. And that's very, uh, plenty of leg room for my skinny butt. Uh, so 29 inches would probably be good. So um, I will, uh, let's take our tape measure tool and go from here to uh, 29 inches is two foot, two foot, three inches, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, two foot, five inches. <laughs> Two foot five inches. All right, so let's go up uh, two foot two, three, five, and put a little mark right there. I don't know if you can see that mark right there. All right, and uh, there I'll use I'll use that mark for my rectangle tool, and let's go ahead and draw a rectangle across here and now this is going to um, be three quarters of an inch wide and this time I'm gonna push pull it all the way across so I drew the rectangle three quarter inches wide I span it across now with my push pull tool I'm gonna take and pull that back to here okay and You'll kind of get the idea. It's going to be a, just a shallow little laptop type desk station or whatever uh, and everything. And 29 inches seems like it's high because it's such a low profile chest of drawers, you know. Um, but uh, I'm good with it. That's that's exactly what my desk is. And so I'll, I'm going to be happy with that. Uh, there it'll give me kind of just uh, plenty of leg room and this is literally just a little laptop station it might be someplace where uh, I have a laptop set up because I've got my big desk set up here uh, and my laptop I do things uh, you know video editing or whatever the case may be uh, and uh, it's just gonna be a little place for that maybe something some little other electronics will be on there whatever the case may be but uh, it's only 15 inches deep right so there's not a whole lot of uh, room I mean 15 inches deep you know uh, for most that's uh, you know, a little small but 
the uh, <laughs> all right let's go ahead and now I said 29 inches to the bottom so let's take uh, this component here I'm gonna triple click it and hit uh, G for group to group it and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, move hit M and move that up to my 29 inch mark and that's kind of going to be that right and so now I want this desk I mean I don't want to put little L brackets I want no hardware in this okay um, I mean there's going to be hardware but I mean I don't want these god ugly L brackets I want it to be really clean uh, and everything I need support that that's gonna be a decent span I think I'm gonna go what do I got here um, I've got uh, two foot nine um, two foot nine that's small hold on a second here I want to go 36 inches 36 inches so if I am at uh, two foot nine and three sixteenths, oh, I'm doing math tonight, guys. Um, I need to move this. Here's a fun little tool. Uh, let's hit escape on that. Go to our move tool. I'm gonna grab, once again, this whole side here. Now this time when I move, I'm going to just put in a dimension and just shove it over. So uh, let's do the math really quickly because this isn't like Vetric where I can type in a math equation. Two foot nine and three sixteenths. So I've got 13 sixteenths uh, that I've got to add to that. Nine, 10, 11, 12. So three and uh, 13 sixteenths. Um, so three and 13 sixteenths is where I want to go. Right, so let's move, and then when I shove this over, uh, I'm just going to move it a little bit, and I'm going to type in uh, three point uh, thirteen sixteenths is. Oh gosh, why am I going? Why am I dumb tonight? Thirteen sixteenths. Help me out, guys, in the chat. What's thirteen sixteenths? Uh, the decimal. It is. Uh, 15 sixteenths is 9375. 7 eighths is 875. 7125.7125. Enter. Shove that over. Oh, let's see if I was wrong. I think I'm wrong on that. But let's go push pull. I think I'm wrong on that one. Uh, let's go push pull. Pull that over. Um. 3.7125. I think that's wrong. Uh, let's get a measurement. Let's see how well I did if I screwed myself up completely. If I think, if I, if I know what I'm talking about or not. Let's go from there to there. Three foot and seven eighths. I overshot it by seven eighths. <laughs> how did I overshoot it by seven eighths? Okay. Uh. 0.8125. Thank you so much, Harvey, for jumping in there. 8125. But somehow or another, I overshot 36 inches by 7 eighths. So let's uh, move this back. Oops. Hold on. I want to move the whole thing. So like that. Oh, you saw my gun. All right. Select it all. Move. Uh, shift it back seven eighths point eight seven five enter there we go and on this component here uh, push pull this back seven eighths okay so if I did everything correctly I should be at 36 inches there which is three foot Wonderful. Man, man, math. Holy cow. <laughs> All right. So this is kind of uh, basically this is what the towers are going to look like. Uh, with their, they're going to have a little desk in between. Uh, like I said, there's three, a three foot span 
so I don't want, I really don't want brackets, but I might make some really cool cornucopias. Is that the right term, guys? Cornucopia, those nice little corner brackets? Uh, or is cornucopia the little basket uh, for Thanksgiving? Uh, corbel. Corbel is what I want. Lord have mercy, I'm brain dead tonight. Uh, I might make some nice little decorative corbels, carve them out on the CNC uh, to go on the front here. I'm not going to try to draw them in SketchUp. Forgive me on that one, guys. That's not my forte. But um, that would probably look nice, give it a little bit of decoration. As long as I got room for my chair to slide in there, which I should have. I'm not that wide. Uh, we should be good. Okay. Now, <clears throat> on the uh face frames here uh this is 24 inches and i really want to do a full face frame um and uh and my drawers are going to be flush to that face frame now i do not have this design this is just we're winging it guys this is this is all part of designing in the process and you're seeing how sketchup works and all that wonderful jazz um but um uh, so we're winging it as we go uh, but um, so I don't have any plans or drawer spacing or none of that that's all going to be discovered here in this phase and then we're going to look at uh, the panels and stuff we're going to jump into Vetric and do some raised panels and all so the class isn't going to be really long and drawn out but we are going to get we got to get the design uh, phase finished now, to give this a little bit of life and realism, let's add a little bit of color to this. Um, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna be painting this, so I am gonna be using probably a poplar or a select uh, pine or something. I think poplar is good paint grade wood and stuff. <clears throat> uh, I, I want to paint it because I want to give it a kind of a distressed look. Uh, I'm gonna be changing up the style of my office. Right now, everything is this cherry, and it's fake cherry. It's not, and unfortunately, I'm a woodworker. I didn't build my bookshelf or my corner bracket or any of that stuff uh, and everything. Uh, it was one of those, hey, go to the store and just buy everything that matches. But that was when I had my cherry desk. And now I have a nice uh, uh, glass top desk and stuff, and I want to change this uh, office style a little bit. So I think I want to kind of make it a little bit more rustic, if you will, a little bit of distressed uh, or something, uh, more so than modern. I don't know yet, but uh, I know that I'm gonna be painting this. Um, and so uh, if, if I wasn't painting it, then it would be a walnut, all made out of walnut. But uh, I think I'm gonna go with kind of a, uh, a, beige uh, color or maybe a bit of a distressed white um, uh, that I'm not 100% sure on yet I gotta decide uh, unfortunately they don't have colors like distress or anything like this you just got general color palettes and all that wonderful stuff um, but the top here um, is going to be I think on the top I might might do a nice wood top just leave it natural god I don't know all right we'll just leave it like it is um, and uh, we'll go from there uh, let's oops. let's give this a little bit of a darker uh, shade on the base just so you can kind of see what's uh, happening here oops don't do that okay so I don't know really can't tell much on the color change I could go wild with the colors but that's good enough all right so uh, the face frame I want a full face frame and generally, uh, the face frames, when I make them, I use the Craig jig. Uh, pocket hole screws, great quick way to, um, uh, you know, join wood. Uh, very solid. The pocket holes are hidden. 
uh, and um, I think that's what I'm going to do here. I'm not going to try to create a big slab and then CNC cut out the drawer slots or anything crazy like that uh, because I'm going to have enough CNC work for my uh, trim and, and uh, my edges uh, and, uh, and everything on this. Uh, so um, one of the things that I've got to be mindful of and what we were talking about is the outside, they're going to have this double panel. Uh, there's going to be a double panel here as well, but it's not. It's really going to be kind of a triple panel because there's going to be a desk in here. So the undersides are going to have that raised panel look. That we're going to have to do in Vectric uh, when we lay out all the vectors and all. Um, this part will probably get mortised in. Uh, we'll cut a uh, dado and um, do that. Yeah, unless I go with the cornucopias or something. Or, shoot. I got Thanksgiving on the brain, guys. It's already November. Uh, the corbels. Okay, let's get our tops in here. And for the tops, I am going to go, uh, it's going to be a painted body. And I am going to go with a nice natural wood top. Uh, I do want a little bit of style to this and everything. So, um... Uh, it's either going to be a maple top um, or cherry. I don't know why uh, cherry because that's what I'm moving away from, but we're going to have a nice top. So once again, kind of this is the, you know, I like that painted look, uh, nice, uh, simple hardware, uh, but with that nice natural wood top, you know, and that's kind of what we're going for. All right, and let's go, let's take a pause here and hit save, right? In case something happens because uh, we still got a ways to go and let's save this uh, as my chest of drawers sketch up file and let's go in and answer um, let's answer some questions because you guys are either having a conversation for yourself or you're asking a lot of question um, Let's see here. Uh, if you have questions, guys, that'll help me out with this long chat conversation you're having, uh, put a question mark in front of your question uh, so I know it's a question. Um, soft and hard maple in Wisconsin is almost double the wear. Yeah, so prices have gone up on wood and stuff, and uh, that's why I haven't built any furniture in a while or anything, but I really need this. I really need this. I... I have, um, I made a design mistake in this room that I ripped out all of the walls uh, and there was a closet in here and I wanted more space. Well, I ripped out the closet so I could have more space. And then the walls that I ripped out in the hallway, uh, in the kitchen, I gutted the whole, I mean, I, down to the bare studs. Um, I mean, just gutted everything, tore out walls and, and all that stuff. And I was going to put this beautiful, with my kitchen, my new kitchen layout, I was going to put this beautiful pantry. And I built the walls and everything for the pantry. Guys, I'm using it as a closet right now. Guys and girls, I'm using it as a closet because I have no space for anything. And uh, that wasn't its intended purpose. So I went to Walmart and bought one of these little put together type uh, little dresser drawer things, you know, that uh, would hold stuff. And no, that's not cutting it either. Uh, these are not going to be very big, but they are going to hold some necessities and stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, I shouldn't have tore out the closet. But I live in a small place and uh, there, there's only so much you can do without adding on under, you know, under roof. So, I've got to do what i got to do, and this is a necessity. So, we'll do that. All right, let's get the tops on here. So, let's go with our rectangle tool. I'll shut up talking, and then I'll keep... If you have questions uh, that I've missed or anything, because you guys are having a long conversation, um, but uh, if there's questions, throw a question mark in there and retype your question if I missed it, because that chat is just scrolling. All right, let's go with a rectangle tool, and let's come over here for right now push pull this up P for push pull and pull this up 0.75 
Now, I want a bit of an overhang here. Uh, so I'm going to uh, pull this out. Um, I think I want a, a three quarter inch overhang. So um, 0.75, not on the back, on the front, push pull this 0.75 and on the side, 0.75 okay all right let's uh triple click on that to group it together and let's give this a nice wood color uh just so we look like something here uh i'm gonna go for right now uh i'm gonna go for a walnut look you know whatever the case may be. And we're probably gonna do a bit of a round over on that edge all the way around. All right, now, on the round over, there's a very cool tool called the follow me tool. Now, I am not the greatest with the follow me tool. Uh, and uh, uh, so bear with me on this one. Jay Bates taught me this, and I'll be darned if I can remember exactly how it goes, but um, I'm going to uh, come in here. First of all, I need to uh, ungroup. Um, I need to ungroup this. So explode, it's called. I need to explode that. Okay, all right. So with the follow me tool, if I draw the profile... I can have that profile sweep around. Let's see if that works. All right, so I'm gonna do a bit of a, kind of a rounded edge here. Um, it's going to, let's pull this out. Come on now, work with me. It does not like that. Hold on a second. Jay, you'd be kicking me in the head right now. All right, this this is my this is my this is we give me a second guys. This is my uh Bane of existence right here. Um, okay, so let's come down to here. Wonderful. Let's take the line tool right here and come straight down and over. And of course I missed it by a mile. I did, I missed it by a mile. Uh, let's go ahead and fix that line tool. There we go. All right, select this line and hit delete. Okay, come up here and where these lines intersect, uh, it should let me select that line and hit delete. And that'll make that one kind of component right there. Okay, just a two dimensional component. Now, this is supposed to be where the magic happens. And uh, I think I'm happy with that simple little rounded design, but we're gonna use the follow me tool. Um, and uh, let's go to tools, follow me. And on the follow me tool, uh, we're going to select the face to extrude, okay, which is this face here. And then we're going to uh, select the parameters. Ooh. Well, all right, hold on. First of all, let's select the parameters. This line, this line, and that line. Now that that's selected, go to the follow me tool. 
Wait, hold on. <laughs> hold on, guys. All right, so if I do shift, drag the face, alternate equals face perimeter. Okay, got to hold the alternate key. Is it going to do it? Whoa. Hold on a second here. Hold on, guys. We're going to get this push-pull thing. All right. So, escape out of that. All right. Come on, Jay. I'm channeling you right now. So, this, that, that. Oops. Turn that off. All right. Those three perimeters. That's what I want. That's what I want. Now, select the object, shift to extend, tools, follow me. Ha <laughs> ha! Hot diggity dog, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, so that puts that nice little trim edge all the way around all three sides. Sorry, that one was a little bit... <laughs> It's been a while since I did the follow me tool, but I love the follow me. I mean, look how it even does the nice miter joint right there. Uh, sweet. So I am happy with that. Okay. So that's going to be my little decorative edge. Man, I love that follow me tool. All right. Um, you're welcome, Cooley. All right. Uh, that's great. Now, let's select all of that. Let's group that together. And let's take, uh, I'm gonna go from underside here and zoom out. And I'm gonna grab this, I'm gonna hit the move tool and I'm gonna grab it right on this edge underneath, right on this edge. And I'm gonna hold down the control key and I'm gonna snap that edge right to here. So it puts it in the same place on the other side. Love it. All right, let's get fully centered camera standard view front. And let's turn this a bit perspective. That's going to be our tops there. All right, nice. Uh, the tops, this uh, little round over and all. Um, probably going to use I've got a cove bit for this on the CNC I'll either use the router table or I will use the CNC to make that on the edge of the walnut piece uh, because it is going to be walnut even though it's white right now right it is going to be part of that walnut board I just have it uh, standing out a little bit um, so you can see it right so it shows up here and uh, and all and all that stuff, but man, I'm proud of that. I just did I did good with that push pull tool. All right, now the face frame, okay, the face frame. We're gonna go with a rectangle tool, and uh, my face frame uh, parts they are going to be um, one and. A half inches uh, wide by three quarter. Uh, so we're gonna go. Let's see here. We're gonna go. Thirty five and a half by three quarter. Uh, so. 35, oops, hold on. I need my 1.5 comma 35.25, enter. There we go. Push, pull. That, by the way, that is this tool up here. Can you guys see the top of that? It's a little box with an arrow. 
uh, 0.75. So that's going to be one of the rails. Group that together. Triple click and G for group. Uh, I'm going to hold down the control key. Hit M first and then hold down the control key and drag this one over to here. Cool beans. Uh, for some reason, I didn't snap where I wanted to. Right there. Wonderful. Oh, well, that's because. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, let me show you one of the things here. Let's turn this sideways and look at this. When I drew that rectangle down, I drew it at an angle, which can happen. Don't do that. Uh, let's get back here. Let's try that again. I'm going to come at it from the side so I can see it better. Uh, let's get... Well, here. Let me just do this. Rectangle tool. It's going to be 1.5 comma 35.5 enter wonderful push pull 0.75 enter wonderful triple click and G for group all right let's rotate this bad boy Q for the rotation and we're going to rotate this up 90 degrees. Stand it up. Perfect. And then we'll move it over into place. Okay. Hold down that control key while I'm still in the move tool. And I'm going to grab it here on this side this time. Holding that control key down. I drag the copy over and snap it to there. Okay. Everything looks good. Uh, now, I'm going to, uh, because I want that inch and a half overlap, you know, and I just took away, or I want that three quarter inch overlap on the front of these, uh, and I just took away that three quarter with the face frame. Stupid me, I drew the tops first, and all that happy jazz. I'll fix that in just a second, but let's go ahead and get this uh, face frame finished off. Laney, Laney. Now five drawers. Um, let's uh, let's get our top rail on first. One. Point five comma uh, twelve and seven is nineteen and a half. So nineteen point five comma one point five. Enter. There we go. And I got to go from the back side to push pull this. Push pull. Snap it to there. Group. Try to group your components. Otherwise, as you're drawing these things, uh, they will join together when those lines touch each other. And then when you're going to start trying to move things and it's going to move the whole thing and all that, if you're ever in SketchUp, uh, definitely uh, try to move these things together. Uh, or group them together and then that way when you're trying to move a component uh, You know it moves it won't just like start pulling the rest of the parts and all that stuff And everything All right, hopefully I'm not boring you guys. Hopefully you're getting something maybe something out of this You're seeing how SketchUp kind of works. This is literally we are designing this from scratch. So hopefully you're not too bored um, and uh, all that stuff so far uh, I know you wanted to watch tonight for some Vetric lessons. We're going to jump into Vetric, I promise you. Uh, we might, uh, you know, here in 
a few minutes, we might uh, do that and kind of start laying out our panels and drawer fronts and stuff. Uh, the one thing I do know is, uh, let's imagine, let's take some measurements here. Let me get this bottom rail in for a moment. Uh, I'm gonna hold down, hit the move key, M for move, hold down the control key and drag a copy down here. Okay. And then of course, uh, now I want five drawers in here, okay? And uh, I'm going to uh, figure out what my spacing is uh, between this top and bottom rail uh, because I'm gonna need, um, I've got my drawer, divider, drawer, divider, drawer, divider kind of deal and you know, uh, we've got basically one, two, three, four dividers that we're going to do. Now you see how this looks like, uh, you know, their paint job is really good, uh, or they might have cut it out of one piece of MDF, who knows. But, uh, you know, it's just one panel and then they cut out the squares. I could absolutely do that on the CNC, right? And some of you may be saying, hey, why not just do that? Uh, and um, I don't know. Uh, I don't know why I would not just do that. But... Um, I think uh, rather than gluing up panels and, and all that stuff and, and all, I just, I'm gonna make the face frame uh, and it'll be good there. But, uh, so I need four dividers, right? And so um, I'm gonna measure between uh, this point and this point here. Uh, and the Version eight used to be able to, used to give me control on how my measurements are displayed, like in inches and and all that stuff. Uh, and um, you know, as they have moved on to you know version fifteen, version eight is the last free version they had of SketchUp. Uh, you can probably still get a copy of that at jayscustomcreations.com. But uh, the the version eight uh, it no longer lets me choose the type of uh, dimensions that I see, so it's in foot in inches foot and inches instead of inches you know uh so it is what it is but i have uh two foot eight and a half inches so um i've got uh two foot is 24 inches eight brings it to 32 and a half inches right did i do that one right i did that one right 32 and a half inches and so um, that's my spaces. And if I had to, uh, if I had to divide this, let's now I'm going to break out the calculator because it is what it is. But um, if I have one and a half inch uh, strips and all. Uh, 1.5 and I need four of them okay that's six inches and uh, I'm gonna be taking that uh, 32 and a half and subtracting that six and that's gonna give me 26 and a half inches right um, of space in all and uh, so I need to um, divide that by that four, and so every six uh, and five eighths uh, is where this is gonna be. So, what I wanna do is I'm going to escape out of the measure tool here, and I'm gonna measure from here up six point six two five, and I'm gonna put a mark there, okay? Now, the cool thing about the move tool is if I hold down my control key and I grab this piece here and I drag a copy up and snap it to here, right, that copy, I can now type in X4 and hit enter and it'll put all four of those in. Love that. Love it. All right. So that's going to be my face frame. So I measured the distance that I need to move. 
I made a copy and moved it up to that place. And then after I got it into that location, typed in X4, that's how many I need. And it puts it that equal spacing all the way up. Love that, love that. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, Kool-Aid, this is not more, it's not more complicated than Aspire, but it's, it's completely different where, you know, um, uh, because, you know, we have, we have limited tools here. Uh, you know, we're drawing rectangles and lines and arcs and curves, and but we're extruding them, similar to Aspire, right, in the modeling tools and stuff. Um, but, uh, you know, um, it's once you know, like, how to use the push-pull tool to extract something or how to draw a rectangle to the size you want and, and, and things like that. Man, this software is uh, super easy to use to quickly lay out things and stuff. Um, and speaking of quickly, let's get this party started. All right, so I'm gonna select this component here. I'm gonna hold down the shift key and select this, 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 this and that, and that. I'm going to group that together and then I'm going to uh, come over here and move tool. I'm going to grab it on this back corner because I want to snap it to the other, other side over there. So I'm going to grab it on the back corner here, right here, and hold that control key down. I'm going to drag it over and snap it to the back corner of this one, if I get there. Get there, one. There we go. Uh, so now my chest of drawers with my face frame starting to come together. Right? Not too shabby. Not too shabby. I think it's gonna look good. Um, this uh, will have a nice uh, round over on it at some point and the question that I want to ask myself is do I want this look right here is that a design flaw on my part uh, I think this bottom part is going to actually go all the way down um, uh, and it's going to sit on that front lip there's going to be a front lip and this trim is going to go around because I think that looks like a stupid design error right there right so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this component here and we're going to move it. I'm just gonna grab it here and move it out 0.75. And I'm going to click into it. Oops. I'm gonna triple click into it so that way I can push pull this uh, component here back to there right and just extend it back out there where I want it uh, so when you have a grouped component you got to triple click into it or click into it double click into it uh, so you can actually work with that component um, whatever you're doing with it and stuff uh, and all so now coming from underneath let's get out of that component here uh, again this rail there's gonna be a front rail here so let me take that rectangle tool and draw that in and push pull that out 0.75 okay triple click that and group it together and then this oops this component here I'm gonna double click on now all this is gonna be hidden uh, you know down here and everything you won't see but uh, let's come in and push pull this face frame down here is gonna be a lot white Oop, hold on now you see when I started stretching this it started stretching the others right that's because they are they are part of that component and one of the uh, most important things is that you make the component unique uh, so that it doesn't do that. So um, on this uh, part here, on this part here, 
I need to make it unique, meaning it's not like the others. That way I can come into here and push pull this down to this lip and it's not gonna change my other rails, okay? Uh, the same thing with um, these side rails and everything. Uh, because I copied this side rail to this one, to that one and everything, whatever I do here, it's gonna do on the other three. And I'm okay with that on this one. So I'm gonna triple click into that and push pull this down to there, okay? And that you'll see that it did it on the other side. And if we come over here and look over here, um, it uh, you know moved it down here as well. Okay. Now the only thing that I'm missing here is uh, I've got to move this part, this one, right here. Uh, we're gonna move that. Oh, Lord of mercy. Get your angles right there so you can see what you're doing. There we go. I'm going to move that up here. Uh, and let's try that again. I don't want to. Come on, Laney. I don't want to move out. I just want to move up. 0.75 enter. And then I'm going to triple click into this. Uh, push pull this back to here. And that should do the other side for me, right? Okay. Yep, everything looks good. And then now I can put in my rail and uh, what the heck? I'll just grab this one, hold down the control key or move, and then hold down the control key. And I'm just gonna drag this over and get it in the general spot. It's not in the right spot yet. I'm gonna get it in the general spot uh, and then I'm going to move it where it belongs. So um, I'm just gonna grab this and snap it. Come on, work with me. Work with me there, Hoss. Grab this. Snap it. Okay, I'll use this corner. There we go. Snap that into place. And then I've got to extend it over here. So I've got to click into it. Okay. And push pull this side over to there. Okay. So that's going to be that rail. Now, this side over here, same thing. Okay, this part here, um, it's going to uh, move, grab this and right here in this corner and snap it to there. And there we go. Okay, I don't have to extend this one because they're both the same. Remember I made a copy, I didn't make it unique. So when I extended the one, it extended the other. I just had to move it into the right place. And this gets you dizzy, sorry guys, you know, with all the orbiting and turning and all that stuff. But the one thing I love about this is it is a truly three-dimensional space. Uh, and um, we can, you know, I can, if I go into one of the boards, we can look inside of it and all that kind of thing. Crazy stuff there. Okay. All right. So, how's that looking? So far, so that's the general idea. So my drawers, uh, drawer fronts, uh, this is a good measurement to know because I'm gonna have uh, probably about, I think a 16th inch reveal all the way around. Uh, so we can jump over to Vetric at this point and I can start laying those out and everything. But let's take some measurements before we go. Um, uh, we're gonna go from here to here. And uh, hold on a second. I got to get rid of, there's another measurement mark right there. Let me select you. Oh, it's inside the group. Are you inside the group? There we go. 
had to get rid of that little measurement mark. All right, let's try that again. So from here to here, we're at six and five eighths inches. We know that because that's what our spacing was earlier, right? And then from here over to here, uh, we're at um, 19 and a half inches. So let me write that down because I'll forget. 19.5 by 6 point uh, 625 and let's go ahead at this point and let's jump over to Vetric and start laying out our drawers so we're gonna save this and you know I could draw everything here in SketchUp and literally import those vectors right into Vetric uh, without having to redraw them, I could import those 3D designs from SketchUp, a SketchUp file. I can import them right in. Um, but uh, that will be for another class. It's just going to be easier for us because time is a, a going through uh, to just jump into B-Carve and lay out our drawers. And I need um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of them. Okay, let's go to VCar Pro. Anything I'm doing here can be done in Desktop Pro and Aspire. So let's go to VCar Pro. Now, yeah, I know, Bruce, I said a five drawer, but I'm going four. Uh, I'm going four drawer on this uh, because of the height and everything. And uh, it's a four drawer. Uh, one, two, three, four. Not a five drawer. So Bruce caught me on that one. Bruce is like, wait a minute, four or five drawer there, bud. Uh, but no, Bruce, it's a it's a four drawer and everything. I could go a little taller on my towers if I wanted to, if I want to add another drawer, but I'm going to be happy with that. Now this one, uh, this one is a five drawer, right? And um, again, this was the inspiration. It wasn't, I'm not copying this design at all. Uh, I'm trying to do something different, but uh, their drawers are probably just a little bit shallow. This looks to be like a two inch. I don't know. Um, they just don't look as deep and I need storage space. Uh, even though I'm cutting myself out of drawer, I'm giving myself more room because I have big clothes, jeans and t-shirts and all that good jazz. So we're going four. All right, let's get into Vetric here. So the great thing about Vetric, we can lay out sheets in version 11. If you haven't upgraded to version 11 and you've been thinking about it, uh, some of the new enhancements are awesome. Uh, and um, I highly recommend it. Uh, the Being able to work with multiple sheets and things like that in a single project is great. All right, so let's go here and uh, our width is going to be 19 and a half uh, by 6.625 by three quarter. Uh, for me, I'm going to touch off on the material surface and I am going to start in the bottom left hand corner. Okay, so this will be uh, the drawer front design. And uh, then I'll we'll get the measurement of the side panels and we'll lay them out in here as well too. On the drawer front, uh, there's going to be kind of a raised panel design. So um, I'm going to take a rectangle here and uh, with square corners, uh, and I'm going to you know um, draw a rectangle. Uh, let's see from here to here. And I'm going to offset that rectangle inward um, one inch. Let me see here. One inch. Let's see. Yeah, that'll that'll be good. One inch. All right. And then I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna offset it inward three inches. Oh, okay, three inches is not, no, that was too much. I don't know what I was thinking. Uh, one and a half inches inward from there. There we go. Okay, now, 
the profile that I would like on this uh, and everything, we're gonna use the profile toolpath. I could model this up if I was in Vetric, Aspire, blah, 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 but we're gonna use the molding toolpath. And I keep saying the modeling toolpath. I've been saying the modeling toolpath uh, since the beginning, but we are gonna use, or I might've said the profile toolpath, but we're using the molding toolpath, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry for all the confusion that we're gonna make this raised panel uh, carve uh, using the molding toolpath. In order to use the molding toolpath, I need a path to follow along with a profile, a profile shape and everything. And so my profile shape, let's come in here uh, and I'm just gonna draw a rectangle right here, just as an example. <clears throat> All right, for my profile shape, let's go into node editing mode. And um, I'm going to uh, delete this point. So you can see that triangle there. And um, now let's, here, let's do this. Let's move this rectangle over here. And we need to look at it kind of like a top view on, on this profile and all, but what I want is from that center island, that center island is gonna be raised, right? And um, let's make this a little narrower here. So in node editing, from that center aisle, I'm going to be uh, stepping down. So let's go with a point here and gonna step down and I don't know if I want to do a nice curve uh, or what have you but I want to step down an eighth of an inch uh, so I'm gonna type in 0.125 and hit enter and that'll move that down and then I'll change this to a busy a curve and kind of pull a slight curve. I got to be mindful that I don't create undercuts or anything like that um, and all, but uh, you know, I could do it as just an arc. Let me see here. Let's go back into node editing and let's change that to an arc and see if, if an arc's going to be too. No, an arc would be good. All right, so I'm going to step down. Sorry, folks. Um, hey, Sylvia Klosterman, how you doing? Uh, let's see here. I'm going to step down. And then here, I want to... What do I want to do? Okay, for some reason, my brain is not working right now. Um, so I am going to come in uh, to here and I'm gonna pull this over so you can see what I'm doing here. I, for some reason, can't think uh, straight today. And what I'm kind of going for, I don't know what in the heck I just clicked on, um, is something along this line here. Okay, so I've got to create um, this. This is going to be that raised center area. I want to come down, over, back up, and then a nice... I think that looks flat. God, I wish I could see here. Hold on a second. Let me see here. Okay, so I want a little dome straight across, another little dome, round over, and then down to there. Okay. Lord of mercy. 
All right. So let's take this and get back here. I'm going to start from the outside <laughs> with no editing. All right. Uh, what I'd like is, um, let's insert a point here and insert a point here. Turn this into an arc and not that dramatic of an arc. Just a nice little subtle dome there. We will not be using this bottom line here. So let's remove that span so I can kind of get the idea what this profile is. Uh, on this here, I am going to, I do want a nice little dip in here. So I'm going to come out straight, uh, insert a point. I'm going to insert another point and I'm going to move this one down at a, about a 45 degree angle. I'm going to take this and turn this into a busy curve because I would like this to kind of have a curve to it. I get to come down and then into this curve all the way to here. Insert a point. Uh, at this point, it's going to um, arch up. And then this is going to be down here. And I want kind of like almost like a little bit of an OG. So let's go insert a point, turn that to an arc, not that dramatic. Insert a point. Pull this straight across. Now I want these two here to line up with one another. So I'm going to select this one first, the one I want to align to. Hold the shift key, select this one last, the one I want to align. I'm going to hit the letter Y on the keyboard and that'll pull that into an alignment here. And um, this I'm going to go with a busy curve. And what I've got to be mindful of, I can't pull this out because now I've created an undercut, right? So I can't do that. Uh, but what I want to do is I want these two, they're not aligned. So I'm going to select this one, come over to here, hold the shift key, select that one last and hit the letter Y to pull that into alignment. There we go. So that looks a little bit more uh, uniform there. I know it looks weird as a profile, but trust me, it will be something spectacular. Um, maybe. So I want to come down at an angle, curve, nice curve in here, dome up, little OG. That's going to be my profile there. Uh, it looks like I've got a bit of an undercut. Let me see here. I'm going to pull this out just a little bit. There we go. Yep. No undercuts. Don't create any undercuts. Um, that is curving back in. It's curving back in. So that's an undercut right there. Uh, so I'm just going to use my right arrow key and bump this out a little bit. And then I'm going to pull this. And that was stupid. Control Z. Let's select that, turn this one off right there. There we go. Now I'm going to bump this over just a little bit. There we go. Okay. Um, ba -da -bum 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 -bum. A little bit more. Okay. Now. My part here, if I measure, if I select this whole thing, right, from the bottom to the very tip top of the highest point on my size tool, I'm at uh, a little over three eighths, right? Uh, and so the uh, thing of it is, um, 
I want to be, I want to kind of be exact and all, and I'm at 0.3875. So I am going to unlink this. I'm going to keep that kind of inch and a half there, but I am going to bring this to 0.375 and click apply. That's just going to just condense it just a little bit. And on um, this here, uh, Let me get my measurement measure horizontally from here to here. I should be an inch and a half. That's what my width is there. That's good. All right. And escape that. Close that. Now, this I want raised up. I want this profile kind of stepping down and then happening from that little raised up area. So this leg right here, okay, this leg right here, um, I need to, in node editing, I'm going to add a point right here. I'm going to take this point and I'm going to pull it up. And again, I'm going to select this node first, this node last, and hit Y, so it's straight across. And then I'm going to delete this span. So I'm not going to finish it off with a leg. I want it to kind of step down from here. Okay. And so, molding toolpath. Select my path, which is going to be the inside vector. Hold the shift key down. Select my profile. I'm going to uh, use a 16th, 16th inch tapered ball nose on this one. 16th inch tapered ball nose. And I want sharp corners, okay? Uh, clearance tool, I think there's, uh, there's there's not going to be a whole lot of clearance, but let's use a large area clearance tool just in case. I'm going to use an end mill. We'll just go with a quarter inch end mill for the clearance tool. And uh, I've got a few flat regions here. Uh, not many, but I will check off to machine the flat regions with the end mill. Uh, and um, on my tapered ball nose bit, I'm going to tell it to skip the flat regions because the end mill is going to do those. Um, we'll add a ramp in here uh, and let's go with a uh, doo -doo -doo -doo, half inch ramp. Uh, machining allowance, I'm going to go 40 thousandths and calculate. Okay, let's preview this cut and see if I did anything correctly. Uh, and I got the preview turned up high, the resolution turned up high, so it's going to take just a second for this. Okay, guys? All right. Um, Let's see here. David, uh, aren't you going to be bumping your elbows on the boards uh, at the end of the desk? Uh, David Pingle asks, are you going to be bumping your boards at the end of the desk? Uh, David, I am only... Uh, Myself personally, elbow to elbow is about uh, with my elbows flat out to my sides. I'm only about 28 inches uh, wide, um, but uh, I'm gonna have uh, uh, plenty of room uh, because I'm not. I'm gonna be in a chair like I am here, uh, and the space that I have in my desk here uh, is only 38 inches versus the 36, uh, and also I'll be fine with that all right so this here all right let's look at this okay 
So this is the uh, drawer front. Now, I want this to go into, from here, I want this to go into this flat area here with only a small little recess, not a big deep one like you see all the way around right there, okay? So that's doing a 3 8 inch deep recess and it's kind of got that panel raised all the way around. I don't think I want to go that deep even though it does not look bad at all. Um, and it gives it some dimension and everything, but I don't want to go down uh, that deep in everything on that outer edge. Okay. Uh, but it did everything that I want it to do uh, as far as my center area being raised uh, and then into my uh, shapes and everything and my little outside little bead. But at the end of that bead, uh, it's dropping down and it's cutting that three eighths of an inch deep. Uh, and so I want it to kind of uh, box off. I, I want to limit that three eighths, right? So over here, this three eighths inch leg right here. Okay. Um, I'm going to shorten that up. So uh, I do want that little recess there, just not that deep. Uh, so let's go um, with uh, this measure tool here and let's measure a span. And currently this line right here uh, is, uh, you know, 0.3616 inches in length. Uh, I want to shorten that up. So let's... Go here. I'm going to drag this up. Oh, let's see. Probably right there. Yeah, that'll be good. So I'm going to recreate uh, that toolpath. Okay, I'm going to recreate that toolpath and just recalculate it. And what that should do is um, on that cut. And let me let me turn down the value a little bit. Uh, the uh, toolpath simulation. I'm gonna. I got it on maximum. Let me turn it down just a little bit so it's a little faster for the preview. So we're not sitting there waiting. But no. Uh, David, to answer your question, um, that was David, right? Hold on one second. Let me see who asked that question. Yeah, David, Pingle. Uh, no, I don't think so. Um, you know, because I don't sit, I'm not going to be sitting up in, you know, in between those two parts. I'm going to be sitting back. My laptop's going to be right here in front of me and stuff. Uh, so my elbows, they're down by my side. I'm not going to be hitting my elbows or anything like that. Uh, you know, when I'm working, I'm not going to be flowing around. So I think I'm going to be good uh, on that. And also, I have to keep in mind the amount of room on the wall that I have and stuff. So um, it's uh, I'm already at, you know, not counting the trim. I'm at 24. 24 is 48 inches plus 36. So I'm at 7 foot. And, um, uh, you know, I don't have I don't have much more room. You know, so I, it should be good. Uh, Laney, is the molding toolpath faster than 3D roughing and 3D finishing toolpaths? Brooks Martin, that's a great question. The um, the molding toolpath is a 3D toolpath. Okay, it's just a 3D toolpath uh, for VCar Pro and desktop. It's also an Aspire 2, but uh, it doesn't create a model. It only creates a toolpath, right? Uh, and, and everything. Um, but uh, it's going to be about the same amount of time uh, to carve this part with the 3D molding toolpath as it would be to carve the part with a 3D toolpath and a spire. All right. 
this just gives me, since I'm working in Pro, this gives me the ability to create a beautiful three-dimensional part uh, and things um, to, uh, uh, with the molding toolpath, I can create trim, molding, picture frames, uh, these drawer fronts, all that kind of jazz and stuff, and uh, it just gives me that ability. So let's uh, look at this from a corner perspective. Let's come in here and zoom in so you can kind of get this perspective here and all. So uh, that depth now, I'm uh, you know uh, a little over, uh, a little under three sixteenths inches deep here. Uh, that nice little groove around. I've got this raised area that kind of comes with a little bead here. Uh, it's going to dip down and then up into this bead, uh, do kind of this little OG little thing here and step down into that raised centerpiece. So it's going to give me a nice looking drawer front. So let's look at it straight on uh, and um, let's see if I can turn on the view. Let's see, I don't know if shaded background or shaded view or anything works with uh, molding toolpath, but let's find out. Light follows user. Uh, that will turn something. Yeah, it, shadow shading, it won't let me use any of that because it's not a 3D model. But that's gonna give me a nice kind of drawer front. Now, my side panels if you will they're gonna have you know I, I want kind of some kind of consistency I don't want it to be I don't want it to vary too much um, but they're gonna have this similar kind of profile except for the center panel the square area on those side panels they're gonna be bigger uh, and everything they're gonna be wider and, and all but I you know I may change the profile a little bit but uh, on the side panels and everything, uh, imagine if you will, uh, it's going to be divided. It's not going to be one panel for the whole length and all. But let me turn this up on its side here. Come on, stand with me. Let's zoom out. Uh, this is uh, imagine this being broke down into uh, two different sections and all, uh, and with a you know a nice smooth space in the middle but it's gonna have uh, kind of this panel. And I'll probably very much use this same profile with some slight tweaks to match, you know, uh, what I've got, you know, what size my side panels and stuff are. But this toolpath here uh, will do, uh, I'll just run this toolpath for all eight of my jaw fronts. And uh, that will, um, take care of my drawer fronts here okay now my one mistake and I don't think anyone caught it I don't think anyone caught it is I made this panel the exact same size as my opening I didn't give myself that sixteenth of an inch reveal all the way around okay um, so uh, I am, you know, that's, you know, just fitting it right in there. I do want, and I don't even know if it's a 16th of an inch. Uh, I usually go with, um, it's not, it's not going to be a 16th of an inch. I usually go with, uh, like a, I get these all the time. These, you know, you're approved for this credit card and you're approved for that credit card and all this stuff and everything. And uh, the wonderful thing about it is, is when you get those uh, and all that happy jazz, um, these make great spacers. Uh, you know, sometimes this is cardboard. Uh, sometimes they're actually plastic pieces. Man, what a waste of plastic, right? Hopefully it's recyclable. But um, uh, they make great spacers in my shop, you know? And so I want uh, space and everything uh, I don't know. I think a sixteenth is is a bit much. It's not too bad. Yeah, that's it's about three of these cards here. So yeah, two to three of these cards. So yeah, sixteenth of an inch reveal. 
So I need to go back and I need to, on my job size here, I need to subtract that 0 0.0625 and subtract that 0 0.0625. Hit equals afterwards and click OK. <clears throat> and um, you know it's reduced my size here nothing's really changed with my design it's still all centered and all that wonderful jazz and stuff the only thing that I simply need to do is recalculate uh, the tool pass and uh, that's it done okay uh, so now my drawers will be uh, have that uh, 16th It'll have, actually, it'll have a 30 second reveal on each side because I only, re oh, hold on. A 16th and a 16th is an eighth of an inch. Um, it's going to have a 30 second reveal on each side. Let's go back in there and <laughs> do that one more time. Oh, Laney, double everything up. Minus 0 0.0625 equals. Minus 0 0.0625 equals, okay, wonderful. Um, make sure that my vectors are centered. They should be, there we go. And recalculate, right click on this toolpath and recalculate all. Okay, wonderful. So, um, that will be my uh, my drawer fronts, right? So now, um, yeah, Robert, uh, as far as time-wise, uh, we'll look at the uh, carving time on this. Um, let's see. Now, this is based off of my machine, my tool settings and everything. Uh, but we are looking at, and this is just a gross estimation, um, but the rough cut is going to be about 25 minutes, and then the finish cut uh, with that 16th inch tapered ball nose uh, doing all that detail work, uh, about six and a half hours. So times eight. Um, Eight times six is 48, right? Oh God, I can't think tonight, guys. So, uh, a two day job to get all the drawers done and everything. Um, now look, I am literally uh, stupid tonight, guys. Uh, hold on a second here. <laughs> I can't think tonight. Uh, let's see here. Hold on. Clear. Six times eight is 48. Thank you very much. Two days. Yeah. So, uh, to knock out those and, um, uh, to get those all done and all. So not bad. I can be working my other stuff, uh, glue up some of my panels, um, my face frames, uh, and all that happy jazz while those are carving. But yeah, now if you have a big commercial unit like old uh, Camaro, uh, Camaro's in here. Uh, he's got a big old shop saber. He could probably knock those drawers out in, what do you think, Camaro? A couple hours? <laughs> um, he can run much more rapid rates uh, than I do. Uh, right now, my end mill is running you know 55 inches a minute and my tapered ball nose is running uh 50 inches a minute so he could probably triple that almost you know but uh let's see here why not remove the top divider and only use three dividers instead of four resulting in larger drawer sizes uh and equal face frame uh sizes top and bottom mike uh so Mike's question is, is why not remove this top piece here to the face frame? 
Uh, and by the way, this will be one solid piece. It will not be two separate pieces here. But why not remove this uh, top piece here uh, and widen up, use only three dividers uh, and get wider drawer space uh, and all. Um, because, uh, you know, this is the design, you know, it started out as a, the concept, uh, the inspiration was a five drawer uh, uh, chest of drawers, uh, brought it down to a four drawer and now going to three drawers. And I've got, you know, my gym pants, my socks, my underwear, my jeans, my uh, gym shirts that keep separate from my regular t-shirts, my regular t-shirts and everything. So I'm going to stick with the eight drawers instead of bringing it down to six because I got a lot of little things that I got to keep separated. I'm insane that way. But no, if you were designing this, uh, Mike, Mike Essa, Mike Essa, right? Three drawers do the same thing. It, this is just the way that I'm going with it. But the one thing that will change here is if I go into here, um, this part here uh, will actually be one piece, not two separate pieces. Okay, so uh, this would be one complete part. And even though I got a line right there, that would be one piece. Uh, but that would be my face frame with my four drawers. I don't want to narrow it down to. Uh, I don't want to narrow it down to uh, three drawers, and I don't necessarily need them deep. My shirts fold up, you know, uh, when I ranger roll them, or uh, you know, depending on what I do, uh, I'll have plenty of room. All right, uh, you would still maintain the four drawers, just reduce the top three to one and a half inch. Mike is saying I'll still retain the four drawers, but you said three dividers. Hold on a second, let me read your, why not remove the top divider? Use only three dividers. Widen the drawers. Mike got me on that one. He's absolutely right. Um, uh, I thought he was, I'm sorry, Mike. Uh, you're absolutely right. Mike Essa. Mike Essa? I'm sorry, I keep calling you Mike. Uh, you're absolutely right. So what he is saying is why not uh, remove this uh, this top piece, take these three dividers. I'm still going to have, you know, one, two, three, four drawers, but widen them up. I'll get wider drawers, blah, blah, blah. You're absolutely right, uh, and um, I thought you were talking about going down to a three drawer. Uh, we could do that. Uh, that's not a major problem. Let's come in here and uh, select this, ungroup it, uh, select this, ungroup. I don't know why I hit the letter U. Uh, U is the keyboard shortcut in Vetric. Uh, explode is what I want. Um, delete this here. Use three dividers. So let's uh, delete this, delete that. We'll keep this one. Let's measure our space from here to here. Oh. I put a guideline in. I didn't want to put a guideline in. I want a measurement, not a guideline. From here to here. Uh, let's see. 24 and 8 is 32 and a half. Still got my 32 and a half. Um, I got to break out my calculator. Hold on a second. Man, I, I can't think. I, I'm usually pretty good with numbers. All right. 32.5. Um is what I'm shooting for, but I've got my one and a half inch times three dividers is 45, oh Lord of mercy, 1.5. Get that decimal in there, brother. 1.5 times three. All right, four and a half inches. Uh, so it's gonna give me a, a couple extra inches. Um, 
we're going to take our 32.5 minus 4.5. That'll give us 28. And we're going to divide that by our 3. Uh, so 9.333 inches. Uh, that'll work for me. 9333 Okay, so let's come in here and go up. 9.333 is fine. I don't care. Uh, come on now. Uh, 9. Point. There we go. All right. Now, let's take this, move it. I'm actually going to bring it down here first. I'm going to move it up to this point. And then I'm going to X3 enter. Oh, hold on. Hold on there, Hoss. Sorry. Hold down the control key. Move that up. 9.333 inches. And then X two there we go no that didn't do work that didn't work right that didn't work right hold on there you come down here okay let's try that one more time control move that up to you son of a gun getting late already all right one more time control move this up and snap that to there x three enter what am i missing guys help me out here mike your idea uh mike essa help me out here what am i doing wrong What I do wrong? Let me go back to the math again. It's something in my math. Okay, I have one and a half inch rails. There's going to be three of them. Four and a half inches. I have a space. 32 and a half inches. I need to subtract that four and a half inches from that. That gives me 28. And I need to divide that by one, two, three, four. Divided by four. I divided by three last time. Divided by four. It gives me seven inches. Okay, let's see if that holds true. Delete, delete, delete. Take this. Move, control, drag this up, seven inches, X3, enter, what the frick, Space should be eight inches. All right, let's undo that. Oh, let's see here. Okay, let me take that from the top here. So I'll take it from there. Okay, let's move this up 
eight inches. And of course, I grabbed the wrong one. Move that up eight inches. X three. Son of a gun. Oh, the X3 only works when I'm doing a control copy. All right, so hold on a second. Um, control copy. Bring this up eight inches. And then X3. There we go. There we go. Let's see. I think this this one's a little bit taller. Let's measure. All right, from here to here, I'm at six and a half. From here to here, I'm at six and a half. From here to here, I'm at six. How do I get six and a half? And that's eight and a half. I measure hold on let me see where I'm getting my eight inches from okay so it's measuring from the top to the top so that's where I'm screwing up uh, I need to add an extra inch so eight nine ten eleven twelve okay one more time Mike's got me on a mission now. Hold on a second. All right, let's take this part. It measures from the top to top. So, move the control key. Raise this up to nine inches. X three <laughs> you son of a gun hold on a second guys uh five and a half i gotta split the middle here so seven and a half seven and a half seven and a half and then five and a half so i need uh five and a half i have to add uh, let's take a half from each one of those. So five and a half, six, seven. I need to take a half inch. So it's eight and a half, guys. Is it eight and a half? Yeah. Control. All right, move. Move this up. 8.5, enter. X3, enter. Oh. Control. Whoa, hold on a minute. Now I'm just getting careless. Control, come up, 8.5, enter, X3, enter. And you're probably right uh, about center to center, but let's see what I did here. Seven inches. Seven inches. Seven inches. Seven inches. Woo! All right, let's take, uh, let's get rid of that little measurement there. Seven inches. Okay, so it was eight and a half was the magic number. All right, let's take this, hold down the shift key, select this, 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 that, and that. G for group, group that together. Let's remove this one, hit delete. Take this one, move tool, M for move. Let's get it back here. Grab it on this back corner. Control key and snap it to that corner. Zoom in and snap it back. Uh, oh, hold on a second. That doesn't go there. It goes down here.
Okay. Wonderful. Okay, so that makes my opening seven by 19 and some change. So let's go in and fix this real quick. Uh, my height is gonna be seven uh, minus an eighth of an inch, um, which will be uh, six and seven eighths, 6.875. Okay, and let's take this and let's delete that for a minute. Let's draw a new rectangle. Let's offset that rectangle inward uh, one inch. Delete the original one. And let's offset that one inward 1.5 inches. Oh, you son of a gun. Uh, don't delete that one, 1.5 inches. That should still give me that inch and a half. So let's go into our tool path here. Select this, hold down the shift key, select that and calculate. Okay, wonderful. So we made that change, thank you, Mike. Uh, I. Um, uh, read it in completely com correct and wrong. Uh, you're you're absolutely right. Get rid of that top extra rail. It didn't need to be there. Uh, and uh, gave me an extra. Where are we at? Uh, we were at six and five eighths before, and now we're at six and seven eighths. So a little bit of room there. Cool. Uh, some more drawer space. Not much, but yeah, man. Good. All right. So there's the drawer fronts. Now uh, that's sheet number one. So if I come in here to Sheets, uh, I'll rename this to uh, Drawer Fronts. And I'm just going to put X8. I need eight of these. Okay. Now I'm going to create a new sheet. And, it's, and we're going to wrap up here. And this will be Phase 1, Part 1. Uh, but this is going to be my side panels. This is going to be my outside panels because the inside are going to be different because of my desk that's going to go there, right? So these will be my outside panels. And they are, uh, let's come in here and let's hide this for a second. Let's hide this for a second. Okay, measure my panels are 37 inches by 15 inches 37 by 15 <clears throat> excuse me so edit the outside panels and they're going to be 37 by 15 So I have my drawer fronts here, and now I have the sheet for my outside panels. Now, I would like to have a similar type of profile and design in here, um, but because of the fact, one of the th and, and that's fine as far as my drawer fronts, I'd like to have a kind of a similar design. I was gonna do just two kind of raised panels, but I, I don't want it to be exact, but I want it to be close to my fronts. I do want a decorative edge. But here, I've got um, on this panel here, coming up about um, 27 and 3 eighths inches, uh, I've got, you know, to keep in mind on my inside panels uh, that I've got this little divider. So this inside is gonna have kind of a panel with a little bit of a, separation in it you know where my piece is gonna go uh, like a dado groove cut into it and all um, but I think I think still two panels will be good <coughs> so let's go ahead and draw a rectangle here 
Okay. Now, um, on this uh, rectangle, I want the bottom left corner to be at zero, zero. And I want the width uh, to be W divided by two. And the height H divided by two uh, to create that um, <laughs> I'm an idiot. Uh, this one is just going to be H. There is no divided by two on that one. Equals. Okay. Let's get rid of this one down here. Okay. So that'll be one. And then I'm going to take that W and H or width and height. Once you set up your job, your software knows how tall and wide your board is. So you can use things like W or X for the width of the board, H or Y for the height of the board, and T or Z for the thickness or the Z of the board. Um, so these two panels here, I'm going to offset them. I'm going to offset them inward uh, one inch. Okay, and that'll be my divider in there. Good. Okay, and uh, I want I'm gonna offset this these inward. Uh, I'm gonna go three inches. There we go. That'll be good. All right, now I need to switch back over to my other sheet, ladies and gentlemen. I need to switch back over to my other sheet for a moment to make it active uh, because I'm actually gonna snag this profile here and I'm gonna copy it over to the outside panel sheet. Uh, and then I'm gonna go back into my outside panel, make it active, double click on it, uh, make it active. Now on this, basically I'm gonna scale it up. Uh, I've got a three inch space here instead of an uh, inch and a half, right? So, uh, and I want that similar profile. So I'm gonna go into the uh, set object size. Uh, I still want the same kind of depth because it's three quarter inch panel and all, but on the width of this, I am going to go um, uh, three inches on that. And similar type profile, it's gonna be slightly, it'll still have the OG, just a slight different look. I don't need it to be exact 100% match. If I did, I'd go in and redraw it at a bigger size with all that. But, um, you know, I just need to make sure that uh, there are no undercuts. Uh, let me check this one here. Should be good there. Yeah, that'll be good. All right, let's go into the molding tool path uh, and we're going to select this, hold down the shift key and select this. Um, We're going to use the same bits, everything, all the same settings. Let's calculate that. Let's take, create a second molding tool path, select this and this, calculate that. Preview that visible tool path. I could probably get away with an eighth inch tapered ball nose in here, the way things were stretched out. I could probably get away with an 18th inch ball nose uh, with this. 
uh, and everything. But um, that would be the side panel. Let's see if I can get a, give me a good perspective view here. So y'all can see it. Let's change the wood type for a minute and see if that uh, gives us a little bit of better view. Let's go with cherry. So you can kind of see the profile a little bit. I don't know if that makes it worse or better. What do y'all see? And everything. But that will be the side panel. Here. Now, on the inside panels, they're going to be the same, but it's going to be, it's going to have a dado kind of in here. So I'll be dividing it up into two separate things uh, where the desk is. It's almost a damn shame that, uh, I could do a taller panel and a shorter panel all the way around uh, to account for that desk over there. So I could have one tall panel, one short panel on all four sides so it looks consistent. You know, short panel, tall panel, and that way it would look consistent here. And then that space in between the panels this space here would be where my desk goes. I think aesthetically that might look better. Give me your opinion on that. Um, yep. Uh, Troy says, hey, don't forget to compensate for the bottom trim, right? Because remember this, this uh, board is buried, uh, you know, it's got the trim around it. So I've got to account for that too. I did not think about that. Uh, my trim is three inches tall, but my part is um, get out of here. Come in here. So there is one and a half inches at the base that I need to account for for the bottom trim. Uh, so let's take care of that really quickly um, pick a side any side uh, let's get rid of this for a moment let's get rid of this for a moment okay let's draw a rectangle this time I need the bottom to be at X 1.5 and the Y to be at 0 uh, it's going to go the um, I'll go the full width on that and height on that because I want to take this side here and I want to just bring it down to where I think well here I don't I need to be exact right so um, my measurement once again was from the bottom of the panel oh, wrong side from the bottom of the panel to the bottom of the desk was uh, 27 and a half inches 27 and a half inches so Um, I'm going to take a guideline from the bottom of the panel, make a relative guide, 27 and a half inches, 27.5, oops, that's not a two, 27.5, and we're going to take in, uh, guidelines or wonderful help with layout. So that's where the bottom of my three quarter inch you know, desk is going to be, or that desktop, right? And uh, so that'll be the bottom there. So I want this 
because we don't use this outside rectangle here. This is going to go to here. We're going to have a rectangle that goes from here to here. This is going to get offset inward one inch. This is going to get offset inward one inch. And that'll give me that spacing in between here where my jaw is. Uh, if I'm going to do some kind of corbel or something, I've got to plan that like. Well, no, I, I, I've got, I can do a one inch corbel. Yep, yeah, never mind. Uh, I'm good there. All right, now this I want to, this one I want to offset inward three inches. I know I want that. And this one, if I offset it inward three inches, it's that. Hmm. Let's see what that's going to look like. Let's see what that's going to look like. So let's open up this molding tool path. Let's select our inner frame and this. Calculate. Our other molding tool path, select our inner frame. Calculate. Might give it a nice look. Reset the preview and preview all tool path. That might do it. I snapped the guideline at 25.5. Did I snap the guideline at 25.5? That'll be the side of the drawer. It's not bad. All right, hold on a second. Mike says I snapped my guideline at 25.5. Man, Mike, you're catching it. You're catching all my mistakes today. Uh, Twenty-seven point five. Um, here, this up here. Twenty-seven point five. Apply. Okay. We're getting it. We're getting it. Okay. So, um, I've got my numbers down now, so it, it's not going to be uh, that big of a deal. Let's take this and snap this to the top here. Take this and snap it to the bottom here. Let me think here from there to there from there oh son of a gun I didn't snap to that one son of a gun hold on a second guys from there to here okay offset inward one inch I, I want to keep that one inch offset offset inward one inch now offset three inches. Three inches. <clears throat> that might not look bad. Let's see. Let's find out. All right. Profile tool path. Let's take this. And we're selecting this three inch profile here. I'm going to try to make it as easy as possible. Calculate. Come in here. Open this one up. Select this. And that. Calculate. All right. Reset that preview. Here, let's go ahead and do this. Uh, let's take this. Let's take this and extend it out pocket tool path uh, I'm gonna go uh, 3 8 
with a quarter inch end mill. Calculate. All right, reset, preview, all tool paths. Let's see what we got here. And if this looks good for me, then all I need to do is uh, make four of these. Uh, except for two of them will not have the dado groove where the desk is going to go. Two of them will, two of them won't. Okay. I am happy with that as a side panel. It doesn't look too bad. This one might look a little weak right here. All right, I'm going to adjust this one slightly. Last, last time, last time. Uh, I'm going to remove that. I'm going to offset this. Um, one and a half inches. Ah, man, I want to kind of go a little bit more than that. I want to go a little bit more than that. I want to go 1.875. There we go. All right, so I need to take this guy here. I'm going to hold the control key down and drag a copy of him over here because I need to resize him. Just this one uh, to 1.875. Okay, bring that down to match that space, that offset there. All right, so on that toolpath, we're going to select this, this, Calculate, and we're going to call that done. Preview all the tool paths, and I think I'm going to be happy with this. Uh, Laney, will part two of the desk build be on Spindle TV or Build It TV? Uh, we're going to, uh, if, we, if we wrap this up here, um, these are going to be the CNC parts, um, part of them. I got to do the other side. Uh, part two is gonna be on uh, is gonna be the full build on Build It TV. It's gonna be the full build. Um, or yeah. Let me think. Part two, I'm trying to think if I want to waste, uh, 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 try to waste the design class doing the little, where the uh, little pin, the, the little drill holes or V-bit points, uh, basically kind of like a little pilot where my jaw um, slides are going to go because I've got to figure that out and stuff. Um Part two. Part two will be on Build It TV. Build It TV, uh, which uh, guys and girls, I don't know. I think it'll let me show you the link. Um, I'll give you the link to that YouTube channel if you're. Uh, youtube.com forward slash c forward slash it's not i haven't rebranded it as build it uh tv just yet um but this is the youtube channel it's my other channel where i do full woodworking builds uh let me know if you can see that in the chat if you can see that link but that's the other channel that's going to be the full build where we're actually going to be out in the shop now um I don't know. I think that's going to be uh, just a recorded. Uh, it's not going to be a live event. Um, uh, it's not going to be a live event. It's going to be a recorded video. We're going to go through. The, I'm going to go through the build and everything. But part three, we're going to come back 
uh, and uh, we will discuss. We'll we'll touch base on what I did with the jaw, the side, you know, side two of these panels for the jaws, and uh, we'll do a live Q and A. So, part one. This is going to be kind of our main design. We only needed these uh, few parts because the face frames aren't getting made on the CNC. Uh, the trim isn't going to get made on the CNC. Uh, just the side panels and the jaws. So with these laid out in the tool pass here, uh, because it's going to be at uh, you know uh, 48 hours of carving, uh, part two will be a just like everybody else's YouTube video that's not live. It's a YouTube video, uh, and then part three uh, we will come back to uh, Spindle TV. Uh, we're going to jump back into Vetric. I'll talk to you about what I did with the you know how I laid out the drawer slides and stuff. Uh, and then we'll do a Q&A. So that's how it's going to be on this three-part series. Okay. So check out that uh, link. And um, uh, I will announce on how many of you, by a show of hands, I don't know, can y'all show hands? Do a thumbs up or whatever. Do some kind of little emoticon or a yes, whatever. But how many of you are subscribed uh, to the group, the, the Spindle TV subscribers group on Facebook. The Spindle TV subscribers group. How many of you watching right now are subscribed in that group? Because I will be on the Digital Woodcarver Owners group. I'll be making an announcement when that video gets released um, on the Spindle TV subscribers group and the Spindle TV, Spindle Training Videos, Spindle Training Videos subscribers group, um, uh, Spindle Training Videos page, I will be uh, announcing when that video part two is released. And yeah, so, all right. And we're going to, uh, and this is gonna be, that'll be the full build, you're gonna see some highlights of the CNC uh, carving, but uh, we're gonna be doing some table saw work. Uh, we're gonna be cutting some uh, dados grooves and just cutting our parts out and things. Uh, you'll probably see, um, uh, you're definitely gonna see some hand tool work uh, for sure. Uh, me with a screw gun and putting in the drawer slides in that video, uh, you know, the Craig jig and stuff, uh, putting the face frame together glue ups and clamping all that stuff um and uh and then uh, the final build uh and uh probably the finish as well so that video part two will be the whole build start to finish uh there's going to be some parts where i'm an, I'm an instructor my videos probably are going to be about 30 to 45 minutes instead of 15 or 10 that people watch because i will be instructing on some of the things as far as the table saw tools and all that stuff but um yeah, so uh, you'll get there'll be announcements all over Facebook when part two releases, uh, and then part three will come back uh, the next Tuesday uh, for part three. We'll talk about what we did, uh, you know, how I laid out the tool pass, or if I laid out the tool pass for the drawer slides, or if I did something different, uh, and uh, we'll do a Q and A on anything that you saw from part two that you had a question about or anything like that. Okay, cool. All right, guys and girls, uh, it is uh, 9.44, 9.45 is where we're going to end it here. Um, this is going to be our side panels uh, with our um, fronts and backs and stuff, but uh, we will come back and um, when you see in part two, you'll see the completion of this uh, model here with the drawers and stuff. Once I kind of take some measurements and do some things, I'll draw out the uh, finishing touches on that. Uh, but um, you'll see that and everything. And yeah, we'll make uh, we'll make the plans and files available to anyone that may want to build this, right? So, uh, and then you'll have the videos to follow. But uh, this will be a completed model. This is where we're going to stop here on this today. Thanks for joining me and uh, we'll see you in the next video. So uh, part two will not be live. It's going to be a regular YouTube video and part three will be live back here on Spindle TV 
uh, and we'll do a Q&A, all that good stuff. All right. Until next time, thanks Mike Essa, Mike Essa for pointing out and uh, uh, great job on that and uh, getting me you know, straightened out on that. I appreciate you all. And um, does SketchUp create a cut list? Uh, we're going to talk about that uh, in part two, but no, it does not. Um, bear with me a second. Let me, before I speak out of turn, I don't think it does. I've never. Yeah. The new paid version might. The new paid version might. Uh, for sure, Vetric does. Um, Vetric will create a job sheet on our cuts uh, for this. Uh, and also, that'll be created. Uh, no, when I create plans, um, uh, generally, I go through and create the cut sheets and all uh, based on uh, all the parts. So, uh, to give you an example of what a plan looks like, um, which I have plans available on builditv.com for sale for different things. But uh, let's jump over to my D drive and type in octagon. octagon. It's either on my D drive or my L drive. I can't remember. I believe it's going to be on my L drive. Yep, it's on my L drive, not my D drive. Let's try that again. Octagon. There we go. All right, let's open that up. And I'll show you what a uh, standard set of plans looks like. Generally, you know, when I draw plans and all that good stuff. I might do that for y'all. With instructions this time. All right, let's stop loading and... All right, so a set of plans uh, would include a cut list, parts cut list. Can y'all see that? Yep, yeah. y'all can see that. Um, and uh, it'll also include, here, let's zoom in a second here. No, nope, not find. I don't want to find. I want to zoom. Boom. Uh, also, additional materials, uh, things like wood screws, glue, all that stuff. And, uh, and then from SketchUp, I can pull these type of dimensions and everything, uh, the 3D view of the parts. All this is from SketchUp. I can pull that and uh, print that 2D image um, you know, of each of the parts with their measurements and all. Um, when in SketchUp, if I, as an example, let's say on this piece of trim here, if I go to dimensions, I could come in here from here to here and I could pull out that dimension. Um, I could edit that text or um, entity info. Come on now work with me and in here I could change the font color the font size whatever the case may be um, and uh, you know so I can pull these and if I for instance if I hide if I select all of this except for this I can hide those things, reposition this, you know, whatever it may be. I could break this up into three different places. I could type in the miter, all that stuff. And I can then go in and file and uh, uh, export that 2D graphic, right? To create the blueprints or the plans or, and everything. And so with the, you know, step-by-step -step instructions, you know, and things like that. 
Uh, that's what I used to do, but these, like this octagon picnic table here, anybody wants to uh, buy a set of plans, uh, makes a beautiful octagon picnic table. But um, uh, yeah, so it doesn't make cut lists. I have, you would have to make your own. Okay, cool. All right. Um, and uh, and uh, Bruce says, wait, hold on. Troy says it's an extension ad, so like an add-on or something probably for cutlass but i don't think it'll do it for the troy i don't think it'll do it for the old version uh if that's what if that's what you're referring to as far as the extension add-on for cutlass and all i don't think it's i don't think it's um uh what am i trying to say i don't think it's a uh uh compatible with version eight i don't know but i'll have to go look at that all right, so, yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I appreciate you all. And uh, until next time, we'll see you in the next one. See you guys and girls and everybody. See you.